Learning to play jazz, we often focus on playing long eighth note lines. Of course, that is a part of the language, but at the same time, if you listen to amazing musicians like Charlie Parker, then you can also hear that he's using a lot of other rhythms as well. So you want to be able to hear and play rhythms like that as well. In this video, I'm going to cover an exercise that you can use on pretty much any song that you're already playing. And it's going to help you really focus on the rhythm. And it's also going to develop your ability to hear some new rhythms and come up with some new things. And in that way, improve your playing. My name is Jens Larsen. If you want to learn more about jazz guitar and use that to make music, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to make sure not to miss anything, then click the little bell notification icon next to the subscribe button. One of the main ideas with the exercise that I'm using in this video is to reduce the amount of notes that you're playing per chord. Usually we're thinking in scales and arpeggios and several octaves. And right now I want to focus on the rhythm, so I'm going to really boil that down to just having a few notes per chord. So I'm going to do three notes per chord. You could do two notes per chord as well, but you just have a little bit more available if you have three. And I wouldn't do one note because then you're just playing the rhythm. That is useful, but you also want to practice using the rhythm melodically. I'm using the first eight bars of Take the A Train because that's a simple standard. You maybe already know it, otherwise you should check it out. And I'm going to use three notes per chord. So the first two bars of C major seven, I'm using E, G and A. D7, I'm using F sharp, A and B. So really just the same moved up a whole step. Then for the two five back, D minor to G7, I'm using D, F and G and then I'm back on C and then there's another G7. So we have three notes per chord, and actually most of the chords are also for a longer stretch, so they're for two bars. And then we can start working on taking some rhythms through that and come up with some interesting melodies and really work on playing melodies, focusing on the rhythms. If you can figure out where these three notes that I'm using on each of the chords are coming from, then leave a comment on this video. The first rhythm that I was using in this example is really just a one bar riff that I use throughout the entire example. So I'm just playing that entire rhythm using the three notes and taking that through the changes. So if you have a rhythm like that, first you want to be able to just play the rhythm with, with one note, just to have an idea about what the rhythm sounds like. That would be something like this, one, two, three, four. And then you can maybe try and improvise over just one chord using the three notes and then getting used to how that might be to improvise, keeping that rhythm going. So one, two, three, four. Of course you can hear that it gets difficult to really be creative and come up with new stuff because you're stuck with the three notes. At the same time, if you're working with it like this, you really get to hear sort of all the melodies that are available or at least a, a big chunk of them. And that makes it easier once you start improvising and you can really focus on the rhythm just using those three notes when you're playing the song. The next example takes another rhythm through the progression, but now I also start to really develop a vocabulary by mixing in the first rhythm. I'm always looking for new ideas and suggestions so if there's an artist that you think is really inspiring rhythmically, then please leave a comment on this video and help us find some interesting rhythmical ideas and some inspiration, maybe also with a song that he or she's playing. The basic rhythm that I'm using in this example is really just the most basic syncopated rhythm that we have, and that's this. One, two, three, four. And the way I'm using it here is that I'm starting with that rhythm, using uh, just the three notes to play that through the beginning of the progression, and then later I start to also mix it up with the rhythm from the first example. So the first one is just really just up the short fragment here and then turning that around, so kind of developing the motif in fact. Then the same thing on the D7, reducing it a bit, then we get another one on the D minor, and then on the G7 I'm returning to the first rhythm, 
and then back to the syncopation and back to the first example again. So when you're working on one single rhythm like this, then of course try to feel comfortable when you're playing with that rhythm over the progression, but don't be afraid to also mix in other rhythms or if you hear some other variation on it, try and play that because of course the point of the exercise is that you start to hear and play more interesting rhythms and you need to just develop that and you also need to listen to yourself and listen to the rhythms that you hear and then try and play those and see how that works. The reason that I can keep on publishing videos every week is that there is a community of people over on Patreon that are supporting the channel. I'm very grateful for their support and it's because of them that I can keep on making all these jazz guitar and music theory videos. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. And if you join us over on Patreon, then I can also give you something in return for your support. Here I'm using three different rhythms. So I'm using the two previous examples and then I'm introducing a new one. The new rhythm sounds like this. One, two, three, four. And then I'm playing that and mixing it with the previous two examples. So the first part is really just using the new rhythm. Then returning to the first example. The third rhythm again. So and then the syncopation. Then on the 2 5 one we get this, the new rhythm twice. Then back to the first rhythm. And then the, the second rhythm. So you can tell I'm moving around when I'm playing this. You can of course stay in one position as well. In some cases that might make it easier to connect the melodies, especially if you want to have the rhythmical ideas also connect across the bar line a little bit better. But for now it's also just easy to get used to the rhythms and then just really move around with the same kind of shape. And that means that you can just really focus on the rhythm. If you want to see some more examples of some phrases with great rhythmical ideas, then check out this video where I'm analyzing a Jim Hall solo. I think he manages to use pretty much everything that you can use within a very short amount of time. And it's really worthwhile checking out how well defined and how varied his rhythmical language is. If you like this video and this is the first time you see one of my videos, then subscribe to my channel. If you want to help me keep making videos, then check out my Patreon page. That's about it for this time. Thank you for watching and until next time.